Hey, hey, this is Julian, and you are on In The Vlogs. In this video, we are going to solve a mystery. Where does the code of a smart contract run? Because, you know, we always said that a smart contract run on the blockchain in a decentralized way, but I always find this explanation a bit weird. What do you mean it run in a decentralized way? It has to run on a specific computer, right? Let's see how this works. So first we need to understand what is the Ethereum network. The Ethereum network is a network of computer that individually each run the software of Ethereum. However, what most people don't know is that there are two main ways to participate. The first way, which is the default when you run the Ethereum software, is just to read data from the blockchain. And the second way is if you activate the minor option, you will be able to write data to the blockchain. So in order to understand where does the code of a smart contract run, we really need to make the difference between when we read data from a smart contract or when we write data to a smart contract, which means when we are modifying the blockchain. So let's start with the first case when we are reading data. So in this case, there is only one computer on the Ethereum network which is involved. The Ethereum software provides an API that everybody can query and one of them allow you to read data from a smart contract. So you need to pick a specific computer on the network and you will ask it to read data from a specific smart contract. So you can decide to run your own Ethereum node for this, but the easiest way is to use an Ethereum node API like Infra. So in this case, you need to trust a third party service to reliably run an Ethereum software and give you the results of its API. In the second case, if you want to write data to the smart contract, this is more complicated. In this case, you need to send a transaction to the Ethereum network where you describe which smart contract you want to modify, then which function you want to execute which argument, if any, and if you are sending any ether to this function. Then you're going to sign this transaction and send it to the Ethereum network. So when you send it to the Ethereum network, you need to know a specific computer on the network that will accept your transaction. But this computer that will accept your transaction, it's not necessarily the one that's going to process your transaction. In most cases, this computer will only relay your transaction to the other computer of the network. Some of these other computers are miners. Miners, when they will receive your transaction, they will put it in a bucket that we call the transaction pool. So these are a group of transactions that are ready to be added to the blockchain. When a miner has enough transaction in its transaction pool, it's going to run all these transactions. So it's going to take the first transaction, so it's going to execute a function of a specific smart contract, modify the state of the blockchain, then the miner will pick the next transaction, which will modify another smart contract and which will continue to modify the state of the blockchain, etc., etc., until it has processed all the transactions in its transaction pool. And once it has enough transaction to create a block, then the miner will try to solve a mathematical equation. So there is just not one miner that does this, but all the miners of the Ethereum network do this at the same time. However, what's important to understand is that at this stage, when miner execute this transaction, the, any modification to the blockchain is just temporary. The block they're working on has not been added to the blockchain yet. The first miner who solved the mathematical equation I mentioned before will be allowed to add this blockchain to this block to the blockchain. And after that, the modification of the blockchain will be permanent. So in conclusion, if you're just reading from a smart contract, there is just one Ethereum node involved and it's very easy. But if you are modifying data of a smart contract, in this, in this case, all the miners are involved and they're all gonna run the code of the smart contract uh, at the same time, but only one of these miners will have an actual impact on the state of the blockchain. All the computation done by the other miners, the one that have lost, this modification will be discarded. So understanding how the blockchain work is important, but if you want to become a blockchain developer, you have to actually build decentralized application and a smart contract. And I've actually prepared a free training that explains you how you can become a blockchain developer and get your first blockchain job. So make sure to follow this link. The training is absolutely free. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you for another video about blockchain.